All right, as you already saw, went ahead and replaced the two rear bunks and wrapped them in carpet and put carpet on that little front, little bunk thing. Got one 10 foot treated two by four from Lowe's. The bunk carpet came from Amazon. as the cheapest place I could find it. I just got the regular bunk brackets. It's kind of just like an angled thing. It's, it's supposed to be the swivel that's supposed to go on the bottom part, but I just mount them directly to the trailer to where it don't swivel. Uh, the cheapest place I found them, I'll put a little picture of them down here. The, the cheapest place I found them was actually Academy. Amazon and eBay had them, shipping, Prime, or whatever. I think the cheapest you could get them was $7.99 a piece, and Academy had them for $2.99. So I waited till I had to make a trip to Memphis and swam by Academy and got a couple of those. And uh, speaking of Academy, this is kind of off subject, but uh, man, they had these tail lights right here. Um, they're not LED, but I mean, they're submersible. And I needed one for the Mastercraft, and I actually needed the opposite side for my G3 boat. It had a blown bulb in it and just real corroded in there. And uh, man, these, these were cheap at Academy. I wanna say they were $11.99, and on Amazon, they're like $13.99 or something. So I mean, it's only two bucks, but but with the rate of inflation right now, a couple bucks here and there, you better pinch some pennies. But anyways, I say that, and I'm gonna tell you that I wasted some money probably. I uh, still don't have my truck, as you see behind me, stupid Dodge. This Dodge actually does have a plug-in for tail lights, And I tried to plug the harness into it, and it's just old and just real beat up and stuff. I couldn't get it to even go in. So I don't want to waste money on just getting a pigtail for it. So, man, I got on Amazon, and they were running a special on LED submersible tail lights, and shipped to my door after taxes $24.02 two tail lights and the wiring harness. The only thing it didn't come with was like the little amber side lights that some trailers have, which you can't even put on this trailer. So I got two tail lights and the wiring kit, you know, with the new pigtail. It, I think it comes with the pigtail to add to your truck too, if you need it uh, for, for 24 bucks. I mean, you can't beat that. So I don't even know if these tail lights work. I'm going to try and cut them as far up as I can and retain the wires and put them up somewhere and probably cuss myself a year down the road when I keep having to move to get out of my way. But um, I'm a little bit of a pack rat when it comes to boat parts because you never know what you're going to need. I might come across a boat that's got these same tail lights on it and I need just one of them. So I'm going to save the tail lights because um, they might work. All right, that's what we're going to do now is go ahead and replace these tail lights. Easy peasy. Just put them on there, run the wires up front. That's it. We're going to try to run, since this is a square tube uh, trailer, I'm going to try to the wires all the way up through so we don't have wires all hanging down like whoever did it the previous time. Just make it look a little cleaner. All right, let's get to work. Pretty easy to make your own redneck version of the fish tape like right now i had a piece of romex that still had the insulation on it romex is pretty stiff and what i did is i ran it through and then it didn't come out the other side so i ended up taping the end to a piece of bamboo i mean just something narrow that's halfway stiff and uh push it through like so you see this is where it came out and then you just tape the end of your wires to whatever your fish tape mechanism is and then you just pull it through. Uh, kind of want it to be tangle free. That way it's a pretty smooth transition to get through there. But as long as you don't have too many snags, it's a pretty easy process. So let's, uh, let's pull these wires through and we'll be done with that. I actually had this boat trailer ready to paint a couple of days ago, but it has rained the past two days. So I said I was going to have two videos this week and I am uh, clawing to get one video out, it looks like. So I went ahead and washed it real good. I actually took like a wire brush 
and went over the whole trailer you know loose paint or whatever i'm not going to try to get too nitpicky we're trying to do a budget build here and then i washed it with soap and water rinsed it all off and now it's totally dry as far as paint i actually bought this for the outside of the boat so it's kind of giving away what color it's going to be i'm going to try rust-oleum on the the outside of the boat but i've always wanted to try it it's oil based uh, see how flat it lays on the boat um, i thought i had some gloss black wool base which i probably do somewhere in my chaotic storage system i have which means just everything's everywhere um, but i don't feel like digging around trying to find it that should be more enough paint to do the outside and inside of the boat anyways and if not i can just go get a quart uh, obviously you don't need any more than a quart to do a trailer uh, you could do rattle can i just i'm trying to use what i got on hand so that's why i'm using this and i'm just going to use a little cheap throwaway brush and a little weenie roller a little foam roller the same foam rollers i use to paint these boats and uh hopefully it looks okay you know we ain't trying to win no award we're just trying to get paint on make it look good and you know prevent some extra rust from happening at least in the next two or three years so uh Let's get to work, knock us out. And it ain't totally dry, but you can tell it looks a lot better already. And like I said, we ain't trying to win no awards with this thing. We just trying to make it look a little better for as cheap as possible. If you want to call it putting lipstick on a pig, well, oink oink. We did it. That's basically all I'm going to do to this trailer. I still need to hook up the ground wire and probably need to adjust the bunks a little bit. And really, that's about it. I still haven't decided what to do about this ugly tire. But besides that, the trailer's done, and I am glad. That was a pretty easy little process. Didn't spend much money. We'll total it up at the end of the video. Well, the other day, I flipped this old boat over, and I found a couple of Easter eggs. One being back here, which I told you I removed the that fiberglass patch that was on the inside of the boat well it had two on the outside too so you could really see what you're working with and uh that's not too pretty is it the other one isn't terrible but it ain't great either well after i got that off i noticed some hidden ones up here a couple patches and I got to mess around with them and finally got the fiberglass off. And lo and behold, we've got a good old crack right here. And also these rivets that's running along this brace. It looks like a lot of them have seen better days. So that's why I have decided, I guess, to swap this boat out for this build. Uh, it's not, it doesn't sound like a very budget friendly thing to do. So if we went with this boat, all right, we're going to have to get some paint stripper to strip all the paint off. Not to mention, like I said, your, your time is worth money. So that's a whole day or two worth of work getting all this paint off. All right, so you spent money on stripper. You spent two days getting the paint off. Then we'll have to address these three holes that we have in the boat. I mean, the best thing to do is weld it. I'm set up to weld aluminum and this would be a really good boat to practice on which i may still do um that's kind of up in the air i'll let you in on that in just a second all right so you're gonna have to get fix the holes and then even if you get them fixed you're still gonna have to coat this whole bottom with glove it i actually i ordered that uh goop coated crap instead because it was a little bit cheaper but anyhow paint stripper goop stuff and we're gonna have to need you know probably sandpaper because you might not be able to get all this paint off to you know, be able to smooth it down so you're looking at about a hundred bucks just in supplies to get this boat decent enough to paint and a transom i forgot about that the transom you're gonna have to get plywood and fiberglass resin stainless steel hardware so what am i gonna do with this boat i think it would be cool it's just an idea i'm throwing out there y'all guys let me know um 
to either get some glove it. I think I got a little bit of glove it left, or that coated stuff, that goop, and just straight up slog it on here, inside and out, which that might be hard in this hole. Say it might take several coats, and see how well that stuff holds up. You know, see if it will actually seal them holes up. You know, I'll coat it on there real good, do all the rivets just like I was going to do, which I ain't going to clean this boat up. But uh, see if I can do that, and then maybe shoot, throw the boat around a little bit, drag it around the driveway or the ground, and then see if it uh, that stuff holds up. I think that'd be an interesting video just to see how well that glove it or coat it, you know, either one of them actually perform. And if not, if no one really wants to see that, I'm probably going to practice my welding skills. See if I can't weld this boat up and I'll throw it on Marketplace for 100 bucks. You know, it, it'll be a good farm boat. Or maybe I can do a, a, a even more of a budget build in the future. Just do an old uh, beater boat or something. I don't know. But anyways, this boat is off. It's on the back burner for now. All right, so we got two options here. We've got... A 1999 Polar Craft 1030. It actually measures 31 inches across the bottom. It has 15 inch sides. That's a Dakota, Polar Craft Dakota. And then our other option is, let's see what year this is, 2014 Topper 10 Tracker. This one is a 10. 32 and it actually measures 33 inches across the bottom now i guess most people would automatically say go with the one that's a little bit wider but uh really not sure to be honest with you uh this dakota has some, has some cool stuff about it the transom is a lot thicker it already has some seat bases which i don't know how they're in there and like, you know, that that's, can be sketchy if you don't do it right. I really doubt that that's a factory thing, so those might not be great. Uh, one thing I do like about this boat, though, is how the seats are raised up. And this tracker, the seats are actually riveted to the bottom. Um, I was actually just talking to a guy the other day on comment that, that the crappy boat that I got that I'm replacing one of these with... Uh, the seats go all the way and riveted to the bottom and that was actually the first boat I've ever at least paid attention to that had that and now this will be the second and what he was saying because that uh, boat that I got that Sears boat or whatever it is now someone has drilled out all the rivets for the seats and replaced them with bolts and that's what that guy was saying that um, when boats are like this you stand up on the seat you know to fish or whatever puts a lot of stress on the bottom rivets so i'm wondering if this will you know eventually be an issue with this one but i really do like the fact that it is wider well this one has 15 inch sides too and it looks like there's a little bit more room right here compared to that boat so i'm not really sure this one does have the outside transom part uh you know they're both rated for about the same weight and a three horsepower motor which i'm going to try to squeeze a six on here i know it's uh not the smartest thing to do but i mean i think if you're not an idiot about it six horsepower would be fine we're going to add a bunch of foam to it and we're going to add weight to the front so that should help it plane in theory so uh decisions decisions what do you guys think a or b All right, so I went with the Dakota. Now, I don't like the fact that it is narrower in the back, but this boat is wider up front. And one thing I didn't realize at first was that tracker didn't have braces across the bottom at all. Like maybe there were some under the seats, but <laughs> there was no visible braces. So if you're gonna floor a boat, and the seat goes all the way down and you have nothing to tie a floor to uh, you kind of need some braces so uh, that's why i decided to go with the dakota it just it will be a lot easier i like how the seats have a gap to them 
I like how it's wider up front. Uh, I'll be able to take these seat bases off and use them either, you know, on this or somewhere else on a different build. And uh, like I said, it's cooler that this is it's wider up front. This is almost like a, a rectangle boat. You sit here and look at it like this. So it should be pretty stable because fishing two people in a 10 foot boat is going to be sketchy. I don't care <laughs> what you do. So you're probably going to be fishing by yourself. If you put a deck up, you're going to be standing up front. So you want it to be the widest up there. So I just feel like this boat is the better option of the two and will work better for this little build. Uh, still kind of undecided on what to do with, with that boat. I don't know if I should just try to fix it or uh, try to sell it as is. I don't know. But anyways, uh, this is what we're going with. Well, okay, guys. Uh, I know this video was all over the place. Hopefully, I can edit it down to where it makes a little bit of sense. But this has been a very trying six weeks for me. Uh, mainly because of my truck. Not having my truck has really put a kink in my whole operations. But hopefully we can uh, start rolling forward now. I've got my the Mastercraft over at Amanda's house. And I've got this boat here. I have the POS <laughs> Sears boat that originally was the budget build sitting over there too. So I have some options. So, so far what I've done to the trailer and buying this extra boat is going to be totaled right here. Now, I saved some money by getting this boat because it doesn't need a transom, it doesn't leak, there, I don't have to coat the rivets or anything like that, and it doesn't need to be stripped of paint. So, I saved myself a couple of days of work and probably a couple hundred dollars. And I can also fix the Sears boat or whatever you want to call it. I, I thought it was a Sears boat. It's been like four different brands of uh, boat that people has thrown out there. So just uh, take a stab at it. I, I don't care. The piece of crap boat I bought that's got holes in it. How about that? I can take it and I can fix it. I can weld it. Uh, you know, it really won't cost me any money because I've got some scrap aluminum to, to patch the bigger ones. And I can turn around and sell that boat for 100, 150 bucks. So... I mean, that really, in a way, I'm, I'm making money in, in that aspect because, A, I'm not having to do as much work, which, like I said before, your time is money. Probably, man, I'm going to say at least eight hours worth of work on that boat by getting this other boat. And, and also, you know, that goop stuff, which I already ordered it, but I, I can just shelf it and use it on another build. Uh, I think that stuff was like 40 bucks, something like that. Plywood, you know, stainless steel bolts, fiberglass resin, the treat, the transom, all that. You know, you're looking at at least another $100 for that. You know, 140 bucks, easy, and then off strip or two. So you're gonna spend another 20. Supplies, sandpaper, Paint brushes, you just easily say 200 bucks. I gave $200 for that boat. So, you know, $200 and I saved myself two days worth of work at least. So I came out in the good is how I'm looking at it. You guys can argue with me in the comments if you want to. Like I said, I could still take that other boat, fix it, sell it for 100, 150 bucks. And so now I'm into this thing for 50 bucks. But I'll, I'll keep you guys updated on that too as we go along. If I do fix it, I might I might do a video, quick video on welding it or who knows. Uh, I really appreciate you guys being patient with me with this video. I should have some videos on the Mastercraft next week and hopefully another video on this. We're going to get to work on it. I got my truck back. I'm ready to rock and roll. I appreciate you guys. See you on the next one.